Okay, so I'd like to speak to people a little bit about uh, group stalking and the education um, I'm speaking about on group stalking. Now, if an individual tells you that they're being gang stalked, group stalked, or community stalked, and they're giving you a story saying X amount of individuals have been following me, wearing red t-shirts or you know black t-shirts or whatever, white t-shirts, primarily red is used, but any color can be used. There's individuals who go through group stocking and various different colors are used in patterns. They're going to tell you the story, then they're going to say cars are following me with the brights on. Um, people are uh, mimicking me. Uh, there's street theater, these types of things. The way it's going to sound to a family member or to a friend or to a coworker or to a peer or any type of stranger off the street is going to sound like this is delusional. They're going to be asking how are all these individuals uh, cooperating in this vast network of group stalking and they don't know, are they all in out with each other? Do they all know each other? No, they don't know. Most, the majority of these people, over 90% of them, aren't gonna know each other. And they're probably not even gonna know what gang stalking necessarily is or what group stalking is. Um, it's being networked in such a way to where these individuals are going to participate in the overall group stalking with little knowledge of the target or little knowledge of the overall orchestration that's going on. So when the individual goes back home to the family and says, look, I went to church and such and such was doing this, then it happened at school, then it happened at work, uh, then it happened with the neighbors, then it happened, um, you know, with my business associates are, you know, whatever kind of social circle the person's in, the person's family and friends are going to be concerned for the person's mental status. They're going to be thinking, you know, all these individuals are cooperating in this and they are all secretly watching you and stuff. The individuals are being specifically communicated to in such a way to do, quote unquote, uh, these minor assignments. Right? And the details of it put it in cooperation with the group stocking effect. So... They're, they're, they're not even necessarily going to know what the red shirt symbolizes or know what the brightening means or whatever. They'll know it specifically for themselves as to why they're asked to do it. These are little details within the assignment, but the overall effect of the group stalking is going on 24-7. So an individual's walking around being group stalked, uh, may have their food drugged at restaurants, um, maybe having electronic weapons used on them. Uh, if the person has people in their life they're more intimate with, those people will become more susceptible to being asked to do more gang stalking assignments. Um, me, myself, I know from firsthand experience, <clears throat> I've had people that I was intimate with that were approached to do more group stalking uh, behavior towards me. And that individual was not aware. Um, so many individuals were not aware of the overall vast number of things I was going through until I started explaining to them uh, more clearly. Um, I've had individuals tell me how they were approached and asked to do the gang stalking stuff. And it shed some light to make me understand from their perception of what was happening. So it's not that they wanted to necessarily stalk me or cause harm to me, um, but they, in a sense, were, you know, be, they were cooperating in this. Uh, sort of like um sort of like a light party to it they're they're a light party to the overall effect but and then i'm coming along saying oh my god all these people are doing all this stuff they know what they're doing but they might not see all this extra stuff that's going on and so when somebody tells you they're being group stock they're not lying to you <clears throat> But then there's an over amount of exaggeration um, that comes into, well, not exaggeration, but there are people who will take things out of context who are being group stalked. Uh, they will move on to say things like, oh, this is part of, these people are involved in, um, you know, this is some sort of spiritual witchcraft or something like that. I mean, you can come online and you can see these people's stories and it's right next to stories about Bigfoot. It's right next to stories about Godzilla. Because they're not aware of how this is happening to them, their mind will look for explanations beyond what's reasonable. So, Joe over here got approached with a prepaid credit card 
and got asked to follow me back and forth to the store wearing a red shirt. If I don't, if I can't comprehend what's going on, I haven't talked to Joe and Joe hasn't explained that to me, my mind might try to create it to be, look, Joe's an evil warlock and he's working for, you know, evil spirits or something like that. A lot of people who get gang stalked, their minds will try to go to places like that to make up for what they don't have the details for. So again, if you're a family member of one of these people or you're a friend of one of these people, what they're telling you is real. The details of what they're telling you is really happening, but their explanations of it might not be as accurate as it should be for you to get a foundational understanding of what's going on. So if you can go online and educate yourself a little bit better on the occurrence of gang stalking, you can look at these people that are coming to you telling you they're being gang stalked, and you can try to create a dialogue beyond what seems irrational and try to give the person some sort of uh, some sort of social voice um, too many times people will go to people and ask them for help and the first thing the person will say is uh, well I believe this is some sort of uh, mental illness or I believe this person may be on drugs half of that is the people doing it don't want to admit their part in it they might not really understand what's happening but at the same time they want to cover code it and make it seem like the person there's something wrong with the person or they may really just not understand because they haven't lived it you know if, if if you haven't lived something you won't know what it is um we can sit here and watch documentaries all day about the vietnam war and you can see a vietnam vet acting out irrationally and you will say oh he's crazy there's something wrong with him if you didn't go through what he went through and you didn't have that experience of being over there in the bush and um, then you can't you have no place in saying what that man went through you have no idea in the world if you weren't there same thing with gang stalking if you're not there going through this stuff you have no idea in the world what the individual going through it is experiencing so they're gonna uh they're gonna feel more isolated it's going to create a, a feeling of isolation and they're going to withdraw more and more from the people around them um what i started doing is i started approaching people you know i don't, I don't really do that uh withdraw from people now i've done it so much it doesn't really matter to me sometimes if i see somebody new i'll approach them and talk to them about it but oftentimes in the past i would just start hitting the people up you know telling them what gang stalking was telling them i beat gang stalking getting into it with them and 90% of the time, it was a positive interaction. There's that small 10% that would shy away from me. And I found that that's usually the people who know what gang stalking is. Or for some reason or another, they know there's something going on and they're afraid to, to speak about it. Um, one of the things I recognized is if I tell the person they can be gang stalked too, I can say, listen, uh, they even gang stalk the people who do gang stalking at times. Usually that person will startle the person. And I'll, they'll get a look in their eye, like, what? Really? And so that's, that, I found that that's an extra doorway, making them aware that this event can happen to, to that person as well. You know, that can happen to you as well. Um, there's people who come from all sorts of social backgrounds, economic backgrounds, gender, race, uh, who've been gang stalked. There's people who had high careers, high careers. Uh, people coming from money who've been gang stalked in their life, you know, they lost their family, they lost their friends. Uh, some of them went on to commit suicide. It's kind of sad because if somebody has a weak mind, and well, let me put this in perspective. Most of the people being gang stalked don't necessarily have a weak mind when they break down or when they go out and hurt somebody or commit suicide. The orchestration of it is multiple individuals constantly plotting on this person through group stalking. So it's not that the individual is weak. It's just that oftentimes their consciousness is overpowered from an influx of multiple people cooperating this at the same time, people intimately involved who know exactly what's happening and a large array of people who don't really know what's happening who are a part of it. So I wouldn't go so far as to say the individual's weak, but there's certain individuals who are more uh, inclined to break down. They're more inclined to commit suicide. They're more inclined to go out and perhaps get a gun, just start shooting people. Um, they may end up on drugs. Um, you know, they... They may just end up on the streets, talking to themselves, walking around, uh, end up at a psychiatric clinic or whatever. 
I can imagine there's countless people who are out here in the world walking the streets and people look at them and say that person is crazy. The only reason the person's on the streets walking around talking to themselves because they probably got gang stalked into that position. And it's quite a story. It, you know, I never even knew what gang stalking was a few years ago. And so I, when I look at people on the streets who are walking around out of their mind, I'm looking at people completely different. You never know what actually is going on with somebody. Um, a lot of people that don't know me, who hear me talking about gang stalking, who are looking at it superficially, who say, maybe it's going on to him to some degree, but maybe he's over-exaggerating a lot of it, yada, yada. They have no idea uh, how this stuff works and how real it really is. And so, it looks, you know, it looks so... Uh, I don't know. It looks so otherworldly. It doesn't really look, when people hear these stories, it doesn't look real, but it is real. And so, again, when I see people walking the streets, confused, talking to themselves, I often wonder, what actually happened in that person's life? What's going on with them? You know, you'd be surprised. A lot of these people might have had similar things happen to them. Um... See, with me... I'm all about educating people, basically on the principles of gang stalking. Now I break it down into three categories, confusion, uh, distraction, and sensitization. Um, the confusion stage is the first stage that somebody goes through. This is when they have no idea in the world what gang stalking is. All they know is they're being followed around, they're confused. That's when the person is most susceptible um, to erratic behavior. Then there's the distraction stage in which uh, the individuals providing the overall group stalking effect on the target are hitting sensitive spots. They're trying to touch the person emotionally. They're trying to touch the person in, in all these different uh, ways and affect their consciousness. They're doing the same gang, they're realizing this person now knows they're being gang stalked. So we're gonna continue gang stalking this person. We might even amp it up a little bit to a high degree, but we're gonna attach emotional connotation onto these assignments. So get people this person knows, provide a subliminal theme to the gang stalking to see if we can mess with their mind. And then after we do that, now see if we can sensitize them to it. So if we can sensitize them to this, now we can push their mind in a, in a totally different direction and see if we can do some real damage. But to the outside world who's observing the person, they're not seeing this. They don't know the subliminal dialogue of the gang stalking that's happening to the person. They don't know how bad the person's been taken to the cleaners by this stuff. And so you may have seen somebody have a nervous breakdown. And you're sitting there like, man, this, this dude, he's tripping. Like, what Like what happened? Dude was, dude was doing good. Now he's over here acting crazy and stuff. You missed the whole dialogue that occurred within that. You missed the whole story. The whole storyline the people behind the group stalking intimately, they know exactly what's going on. Then the individual themselves knows. They're hoping that the individual won't be able to tell their story in a way that's acceptable and understandable. That's what they're hoping. And even if that does happen, the individuals who are most intimate in the group stalking, they're a third party. Um, you probably never really know, will know who they are. You know, you may be able to figure out who specifically was gang stalking the person on the streets but as far as the people who are sitting back plotting an individual it's gonna you're never really gonna figure out who they are I, I it's possible but I doubt it but uh, so that's another thing is if you see somebody being gang stalked and you see a breakdown in their life it, the person there's a hidden language going on there's a hidden dialogue going on that nobody is seeing and that's where education comes in and help comes in at. If one person who is being gang stalked at a high rate, and I know it, I've been gang stalked at a high rate. It's not as high as it used to be, but it's pretty high. Um, if one person being gang stalked at a high rate has an outsider come in and say, look, I know what you're going through. Um, I have some education on the subject. I'd like to sit down and talk to you with it, talk to you about it. If that occurs, the chances of that person success, social success, psychological success, and spiritual success is very high. Um, the success of them not being pushed into further exclusion, social and psychological exclusion, is very high. If two or three people approach the person and start talking to them about this, about gang stalking and saying, yeah, we know what it is, we know what's going on, 
and not even participating in any type of gang stalking assignments, not trying to mess with the person, just basically being there as real support, gang stalking in itself would lose its effect. It would still be going on. You know, money talks. If you got a prepaid credit card for 50 bucks, you can get anybody, you know, you got a few dollars, you can get anybody to jump around like a circus monkey and do anything. You know, $50 on the street is a lot of, you know, there's people who do anything for $50. $100, $500, $1,000, people do anything for $10,000, you know, but if that social support is there for the person, that effect won't reach them as greatly. And so there's a lot of people online that want to expose gang stalking and end gang stalking. You can't necessarily end somebody else's intention for somebody. You know, whatever somebody else's intention is towards somebody, you can't really stop their intention. There's always going to be people who may be trying to use this stuff. It doesn't, you know, that, that that has no relevance. It's all about creating the foundation for the person to go out into the world and have a set, a set of safety around them. Psychologically and spiritually, and a network of people who are there for them, that's going to limit the effect, at least by half. At least by half. It would go down 50%. See, I can sit here, I'm at a graveyard. I can sit here all day. A house will cut their lights on over there. I know that's a brightening technique. Um, somebody will walk by wearing a certain color shirt. Then a car will drive over. I know what all that stuff is. I'm, I'm not tripping off it. But now if somebody approached me and said, Yeah, you were talking about gang stalking. I know what gang stalking is. Blah, 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 blah. A lot of that stuff would be irrelevant. I wouldn't even be paying attention to it as much. Um, so for the people out there on the streets who are susceptible to drugs, suicide, uh, you know, going out, the guy who might pick up a gun and just go shoot somebody because they're gang stalking him. If that person had that type of, that, that's more along the lines of the person I'm concerned about. You know, somebody like myself, it doesn't really bother me. I mean, it does to an effect. It's uncomfortably gang stalked, but I'm not really tripping off it. But there's a lot of people out there who will take it much harder. Um, I've spoken to people who were near suicide. I know a guy who was borderline suicide. He contacted me on YouTube and told me I tried to go to everybody and no one will listen to me. I started talking to him. Next thing you know, he started getting out of the house more and more and more and more. He started interacting with people, going around, explaining to people, explaining to his parents, um, explaining to, uh, he had a psychiatrist that was telling him that gang stalking was not real and they wanted him to take drugs. And lo and behold, eventually, even the psychiatric people told him that they believed it was real and it was happening to him. Um, his family started believing him. And believe it or not, now he doesn't even, last time I spoke to him, he said he does not even get gang stalked anymore. And so I thought that was very interesting. Um, that's another thing about gang stalking is it can tend to stop. Um, you know, resources might dwindle. Um, an individual might, you know, the an individual might reach a certain state of mind, and so the group stalking agenda just might change for whatever reason, or the person might move out of the area, move somewhere else, and the scenario changes or whatever like that. But uh, it's definitely something to be looked into um, by a, a family member or a friend or a coworker um, if they're told, you know, if you're specifically told that. This person, if this person comes to you and tells you they're being gang stalked, yada yada. Like, see, I can. I'm sitting here right now. I can just look and see a car coming towards me. Even as I'm filming my educational series, I, I'm still seeing gang stalking. That's how incredible it is. Even I'm on a phone talking about gang stalking, I can still see the signs around me. It's incredible. But so I encourage people to get more education into gang stalking and um, to get a level on it. You know, get a certain level on it. Um, even if you only know a few things about it, that'll be enough. Um, you don't have to, you know, know everything necessary to help an individual. You just need to know a few, you know, routine things that occur. And once it begins making sense to you and you can see the connections, now you have a place in the person's life that can help them.